Greetings, everyone. I am Eileen Sullivan Martz, and I'm privileged to be the Dean of the NYU Rory Myers College of Nursing. NYU Myers is uh, honored to be a collaborative partner with Lithuanian University of Health Sciences in Lithuania and Kanoas, Lithuania. Today, as part of our series of Dean's Global Health Lectures, we will be discussing this partnership that goes back to 2014 when our schools first signed a memorandum of understanding to pursue work together in the areas of nursing research, education, and practice. Dr. James Seda Newland of Myers and Dr. Arulia Blas Vichenia from LS LSMU have spearheaded this collaboration over the years, and we are thankful to them and to have them here speaking with you today. Over the last eight years, our teams have worked together to support, to support the development of advanced practice nursing in Lithuania for the first time, creating a curriculum based on the US model, but within the context of Lithuania's own healthcare system. I think you'll find that this has been a unique partnership where Lithuania has wanted to lead in their own country, the development of advanced practice nurses within their health system and within their needs of both acute care um, and some primary care. We've had multiple faculty exchanges and sponsorship through both the Fulbright and the Aramis Plus Mobility Program that you will hear about today. Today's talk will most certainly touch upon how cooperation between universities and different countries can facilitate global understanding and contribute to advancing nursing practice in various spheres of education, um, research policy, and practice. Most recently, we were super excited to connect our students in our undergraduate community health nursing course in a true classroom exchange via Zoom. Certainly one of the benefits of not being able to travel is the technology of conferencing by video. Our students were able to present to one another, both from Lithuania and from Myers, and learn about community nursing in each other's countries. How fabulous and how important and something that meets UN sustainability goals uh, for nurses to be more involved in understanding community work. We hope to support greater collaboration on student exchange and global study abroad with LSMU and Lithuanian colleagues, students, and Meyer students in the future. I speak for myself and I'm sure Dean Harate, Mach, Mach Jaskoskian, to say thank you for what we have accomplished together to date. Very good friendships, wonderful times, and I look forward to future successes and continued partnership. I'd like to introduce um, our moderator today is Dr. Bei Wu. Uh, Dr. Bei Wu is at Myers, is our vice um, uh, dean for research, and uh, the and she holds the professorship as the dean's uh, global health professor. The um, Dr. Wu will be uh, moderating the session and um, will introduce herself as uh, she uh, zooms in um, from Shanghai, where she is uh, traveling there as part of NYU Shanghai experience. So truly a global experience today. Dr. James Sutton Newland is a clinical professor emerita at NYU Rory Myers College of Nursing. She is an expert clinician nationally certified as a family nurse practitioner who maintains an active practice in a federally qualified health center here in the States. As the editor in chief of the Nurse Practitioner Journal, she has authored numerous editorials and scholarly papers, book chapters, and co-edited a textbook on the integration of child and adolescent behavioral health in primary care. Her global experiences have included roles as an external examiner to the Family Nurse Practitioner Program in Botswana, advisor to the first NP program in Japan, consultant for advanced nursing practice at a university in China, and Fulbright specialist and advisor to the first NP program in Lithuania. 
She is also a member of the Global Health International Special Interest Group of the National Organization of Nurse Practitioner Faculties and the Global Nursing and Health Expert Panel of the Academy of Nursing and appointed to the International Committee of the American Association of Nurse Practitioners. Dr. Newland is a fellow in the American Academy of Nursing and American Association of uh, the American Association of Nurse Practitioners, the New York Academy of Medicine, and the National Academies of Practice. And we are proud that she is an Estelle Osborne awardee and admires. Dr. Aurelia Blasnifacine is a professor, head of the nursing department at the Lithuania University of Health Sciences. And she has launched the first educational program in midwifery of a bachelor's degree in Lithuania, the first master's program of advanced nursing practice in a Baltic state. Member, uh, she is a member of working groups which prepared legal documents for Lithuanian nurses in Lithuania healthcare ministry. And she's a WHO expert and Fulbright scholarship alumni. She has authored numerous scholarly papers and book chapters. So I turn it over now to Dr. Wu to open up today's lecture. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Arlene, for the introduction. Um, so first, uh, I would like to int uh, introduce uh, Dr. Jamie uh, Newland uh, for, uh, for her lecture. Good morning. Yes, we're very pleased to present this uh, lecture to you. How the Fulbright and Erasmus Plus programs improve global cooperation through mutual experiences. Uh, these are photos of uh, the NYU Myers College of Nursing on First Avenue, New York City, and the uh, Lithuanian University of Health Sciences. This is the teaching laboratory building where nursing is, and count us, we're more than 4,000 miles apart, but as close as the touch of a finger. We just like to give you some uh, idea of the factors that led to the partnership. Uh, I will speak about NYU and um, my colleague will speak about uh, LSMU. The uh, advanced practice role has been well established in the U.S., the first one being in 1965 in Colorado by Dr. Loretta Ford, pediatric nurse practitioners. And other roles have developed since then, and NYU has very outstanding NP programs, which were started in the 1990s. And now we have 11 uh, options and three specialty sequences. Our faculty have expertise, uh, clinical competence, and curriculum knowledge. And many are uh, affiliated with other activities that require looking at uh, advanced practice competencies and outcomes for graduates. Uh, NYU, as we know, is a global university. It's a university within a city, but it also has degree granting sites in Abu Dhabi and Shanghai. And there are many other sites for students study abroad. But uh, NYU has a, a very strong mission of inclusivity across the globe. And of course, uh, we have to prepare graduates who are able to improve access to care especially with the new complexity of care, the um, aging population, the need for chronic disease management, and of course the environmental influences. And there are many other reasons, but improving access to care, to healthcare is critical for a nation. Also at NYU, we have the Hartford Institute for Geriatric Nursing whose mission is to shape the quality of healthcare for older adults through excellent nursing practice. And also within that, we are a World Health Organization collaborating center 
for gerontological nursing education. And I think these are some of the factors that attracted uh, LSMU to NYU. And which factors affect our collaboration? In Baltic State was no program. And LSMU assessed the context of the health care and preparedness for expanding the rule of nurse decided to launch a new program and ask about support to NYU. Strong partnership in Europe and outside Europe helped to make rapid and significant progress in education, science, and practice of nursing. And therefore, as mentioned by my colleagues, Jamie Seta, a common unifying feature as collaborating center, our, our collaboration made more stronger and we found more commonalities between uh, us in universities. Uh, NYU Myers, uh, the mission of our uh, global initiatives includes, as Dean Eileen had mentioned, uh, improving collaborations, cooperation for research, practice, uh, education, and currently, uh, currently or in the past, there have been partnerships across six continents. And we, uh, our goal is to elevate nursing knowledge and science through nursing education, leadership development, practice, and research. Lithuanian University of Health Sciences has more than 140 international cooperation agreements with Europe, American, and Asian universities and international organizations. The interest of foreign students studying in LSMU is significantly growing every year. And currently we have more than 600 full-time foreign students from 54 countries uh, who are studying in our university. And the Faculty of, Nurse, of Nursing promotes international cooperation of teachers and students exchange programs. And of course, anytime you uh, look to uh, a new project, or you have to think about how are you going to communicate? And technology has been a great aid Initially, uh, faculty, the dean and faculty from LSMU visited uh, NYU in person. And then we had communications, of course, by email, Skype calls. I'm on the evaluation committee for the advanced nursing practice program. And so we held meetings that way. And WhatsApp is very convenient for phone or video uh, communication. And then, of course, the, the, the formal exchanges. But uh, we are very fortunate that we have had access to all of these strategies for communicating. And the initial discussions actually um, were in 2013 when the dean and faculty from LSMU visited uh, NYU. And in 2014, there was an official memorandum of understanding signed between the two institutions, and that is renewed every uh, two to three years for time. And in 2015, the Lithuanian Research Council awarded a grant so that I could go to Lithuania to start some initial discussions with um, individuals there. And I was very pleased that uh, the series of workshops that I presented uh, not only nursing faculty, but also physicians from primary care and emergency nursing actually attended all, all three days and, and student, you know, some of their doctoral students and, and other students, there was a uh, great interest. In 2016, uh, Aurelia came to NYU as a Fulbright visiting scholar for three months. And while there, of course, she interacted with faculty, students, uh, uh, visited, uh, observed in the clinical sites, and uh, observed in class classrooms. In 2018, I returned to Lithuania as a Fulbright specialist for, for three weeks. 
And since 2018, we have had the cooperation with the Erasmus Plus program, which we'll talk about soon. And there, and there was exchange primarily LSMU faculty coming to NYU. And this year, 2022 was the first year that there was a mutual exchange. LSMU faculty coming to NYU and NYU faculty, me going to Lithuania. Advanced Nursing Practice Program Roadmap in Lithuania. After situation analysis and discussion with colleagues, social partners, and stakeholders, 2014, Ministry of Health approved the concept of advanced nursing practice. One year later, LSMU launched the, the first master program in Baltic State. Program has three branches, primary care, anesthesia and intensive care, and acute care. 2017, uh, 2017, next please, slide. 2017, the first cohort finished program. The same time, Ministry of Health approved legislation, competencies and function of advanced nursing practice. Uh, changes in legal system are ongoing. Nursing practice and military practice law, including advanced nursing practice rules and functions. Workplaces in the hospitals are being created. And this moment we have uh, uh, practicing uh, in different clinical settings, settings approximately 15 advanced nursing practice nurses. And with changes, we try to make advanced nursing practice stronger and clear in the healthcare system. And we still trying to find place for new model nurses in our healthcare system. Every year, we are accepting uh, from 10 to 16 students in all three branches. branches. And uh, today, totally, we have 63 students who have finished program. Some of them practicing according full scope, some of them trying to find place in the healthcare system. It is photo from our first cohort, 2017. It is inaugural cohort. And from this cohort, all uh, students uh, practicing uh, as chief nurse and some of them practicing, practicing as advanced nurses practice. Lithuania, uh, as all countries uh, meet, uh, faces the same challenges uh, when decided to create this program. It is lack of knowledge about advanced nursing practice. The rule of nurse practitioner is still not clear for all people who are working in healthcare system and acceptance of expanded nursing rule because society sometimes have some doubts uh, and they asking, uh, really nurses can to do uh, uh, so much in healthcare system. No prior experience with nurse practitioner in Lithuania. New educational curriculum and the master le level who also uh, raise many questions, how we can to uh, assess clinical skills, how we can to evaluate master's thesis, how we can to found the appropriate way for research work. Uh, legal policy challenges, uh, as I mentioned in previous slide, uh, legal system uh, changing uh, every, every year and we're trying to implement a uh, new rule in all legal basis, title, license and regulation, scope of the practice, certification and credentials, and of course, reimbursement. When we're talking about reimbursement, we uh, already have some positive um, achievements in primary care, our nurse practitioners in primary care receiving reimbursement separately from physicians. And what I found um, very interesting, uh, I provided a lot of documents uh, to assist and the physicians were really particularly interested in how does a relationship work between a physician and a nurse practitioner, how do they collaborate? Uh, you know, how do they work together? And 
and exactly what was the delineation of privileges for nurse practitioners, particularly in the um, acute care setting. And uh, all of these particular challenges, as uh, Aurelia says, are very familiar to us here in the United States, and we still are struggling with, um, with some of them. And as with any new effort, you have to think about how are you going to finance um, the, um, the work? Well, globally, there are two programs, the Fulbright program and Erasmus Plus program that have facilitated our ability uh, in cooperation. Uh, the Fulbright program, of course, is one of the most widely recognized and prestigious scholarships in the world. Highly competitive, uh, selective, and, but it's open to individuals from all walks of life, including academics, professionals, and students. And there are opportunities in multiple categories. Uh, there's an a, uh, application process. However, there is no, when you look at the categories, there's no visible category for nursing. Nursing is listed under public global health and then under community. And so this may be a deterrent for nurses to, um, to, to look at Fulbright. Uh, and so we have to really encourage uh, everyone. And grants are awarded based on matches that will result in outcomes that improve home and host institutions and countries in, in some way. Aurelia came to the United States as a visiting scholar. There are scholarships for US citizens and non-US citizens and uh, criteria eligibility um, vary a little bit. But for the visiting scholar, she simply she had to be a citizen of a country participating in the visiting scholar program, have a doctoral degree or equivalent professional training and experience and, and sufficient English. And uh, for the US, they have a few other um, uh, criteria, but within these broader categories, they are, there are some subcategories. And a Fulbright scholar typically will serve for three to 12 months, but it varies uh, based on the need of the host country and on uh, the type of project that it might be. Because projects can be for, for teaching, for research, for teaching and research, or a different type of professional project. Yeah, it is uh, actually very unique uh, uh, opportunity in, uh, in every one life. And program of Fulbright has changed fellows' life and had a great impact of their professional and personal ambitions. It is a unique opportunity that occurs once in life. In this picture, you can to see uh, ambas U.S. ambassador in Lithuania, and he every year organizes meetings with alumni. He asking how uh, he, uh, um, uh, ambassador can to help. Uh, he asking about our achievements and he trying uh, uh, us encourage to apply for different grants and to move to forward with our achievement, which we achieved during Fulbright scholarship. It is really very good oppor opportunity and I am encourage all of you to try and use this opportunity. And Aurelia also was the first nurse uh, in Lithuania to receive a Fulbright. And, uh, and so that's a really uh, high honor. Fulbright uh, also has uh, what they call the Fulbright uh, Specialist Program. And that is the one that I was awarded. And uh, 
it's a great option for, for clinical faculty or, or those who have other um, responsibilities because the term of service is 14 to 42 days or two to six weeks, um, which um, many can fit into their, into their busy schedules. And the specialist uh, must demonstrate significant experience in their respective field and leadership through professional, academic, or artistic achievements. And I know in the letters of reference that are required, um, the, the authors are asked to address the applicants, what they call dynamism and flexibility, and their ability to work with people who may be different from themselves. And so there is, uh, all Forbites are considered cultural ambassadors for the US and, and for their country. And uh, I was uh, approached by someone who had been a Fulbright scholar and a Fulbright specialist. And she knew I, I had done some work before. And so she highly encouraged me to apply uh, for the Fulbright specialist. And we were already engaged in um, discussions with uh, Lithuania. And so they also encouraged me because this was one way that I would be able to uh, to return. Well, that's outside my office at LSMU. And during uh, I was there during their International Nursing Day where, where nurses and hospital administrators, faculty, students from all over Lithuania get together for a meeting. And I did a presentation on the global perspectives on advanced nursing practice, expanding the healthcare workforce. And I was very honored to receive a certificate of appreciation from uh, the man in the picture there is the Lithuanian Minister of Health. You don't know how I felt. It was for myself, but also for the highest level um, people in the government to acknowledge the value of advanced nursing practice and also the value of diversifying their workforce. And this was a way of really um, in, in, in improving access to care for many, many people. And of course, as part of the Fulbright, uh, you have cultural experiences that um, really enrich your, you personally and give you a greater appreciation for um, other cultures, other health systems, other educational systems. Yeah, it is a, a Erasmus Plus program, and uh, actually we're so happy because the rule of Erasmus Plus program has been changed four years ago, and it has allowed us to visit uh, NYU, and it has allowed NYU uh, colleagues to visit us. And we are applying every year for grants, and I'm so happy because we every year receiving this fund, and this uh, fund allowed uh, us to visiting, to sharing experience, to see not online, but face-to-face -face, uh, uh, what doing uh, our colleagues in uh, NYU and they also coming and checking what we are doing and looking for our achievements. And uh, some of the outcomes, because anytime you receive funding for anything, they expect reports, you know, outcomes, you know, and so these are some of the outcomes we've had for education, research, and practice. Uh, we, uh, Aurelia and I have had two uh, international presentations at the International Council of Nursing meetings, um, one in 2017 in Barcelona and, and 2021 in Dubai, but it was virtual because of the pandemic. We had two papers accepted um, by the uh, Association for the Advancement of Baltic States, and I am a member of this or this uh, association, and they do produce a journal, and so I, and they have a website, and so I can keep up with what's going on. They're very much into the political uh, things that are going on in the Baltic states, 
And, um, but because of the pandemic, the, the meetings 2020 was canceled. And then in 2021, it was moved to Sweden. And, but the pandemic was still, I, I did not have comfort level to go to Sweden to present. Uh, we've had three research papers published in uh, high uh, peer reviewed journals. Uh, three grant submissions, and the one by the Lithuanian Research Council was funded in, in 2015. And the, the Erasmus program grants every year, we have to um, apply again. And of course, within that grant, you have to um, identify what your outcomes are going to be. And then there have been multiple faculty mobility for teaching from uh, LSMU to NYU. I've hosted faculty at least once or twice a year. Usually two will come at a time and they go to the, uh, they would go to clinic with me and observe me in practice, observe how I interacted with students. I was precepting and, uh, and then we had meetings with other faculty that had interests in something that they may also be, be interested in. Aurelia? Yeah, it's my part, okay. Uh, uh, we have, uh, we shared a video class in undergrad community nursing course. Uh, two weeks ago, it is, was exciting experience. And it is mentioned also Dean Aileen and uh, our students from nursing program uh, present for NYU students about community health, about uh, experience for home services and NYU students also present for our students. And we agree that it's just first step in our common activities together with students in undergraduate program. Uh, we also participate in research consortium and we start to um, research work together with Professor Allison from NYU. And main goal of this research to evaluate uh, how uh, nurses and midwives survive pandemic and evaluate professional uh, life quality and personal life quality. Uh, also, in our plan to make uh, investigation in both universities about cultural awareness of our students, because uh, nurses uh, moving around of the world, and it is very important that nurses must be ready to take care for different cultures, uh, patients, and we would like to look how our nurses prepare for this uh, uh, job. And of course, other research opportunities, what we are doing together with Jamisata, uh, it's uh, evidence based practice, some research paper, and some uh, presentation in different congress and conference. And now, you know, we've uh, given you uh, oral presentation, and of course, photos can say. Uh, more than a thousand words. So we'd like to share some of the photos that uh, depict our journey. You see here in the uh, upper left, I, I'm in LSMU with the advanced nursing practice students. And there I, did, I have presented lectures and some simulation and listen to the students. They have many, many questions about the NP role. Uh, uh, particularly you know, in, the, in the United States. And they are all seem very excited and engaged. And here on the upper right, uh, Aurelia and, and the Dean and, and another professor, Lena, uh, spent an evening session with the global public health nursing students. And with, it was a great exchange. And the lower picture, uh, Aurelia, came to uh, my family nurse practitioner seminar group. Uh, one evening, she commented that our, our graduate classes are too late in the evening because we end very late. But uh, it also was a very good uh, interaction. Students are act actually very interested in, in uh, 
health systems and uh, nursing in other countries. Yeah, uh, it is uh, when Jim and Seth are visiting us, we visit our Ministry of Health. And in this photo, you can see our chief of nurse in our country, Artura Shimkus. He works in Ministry of Health. And we collaborating uh, in different uh, areas uh, regarding nursing practice and science. Uh, in this photo, we together with Jamisata in ICM Congress in Barcelona presenting ab about our research work and about our um, program. And this photo in NYU, in new building, during my uh, scholarship in university. In this photo in the upper left, I um, am... I spent a day in the primary care clinic with um, Dr. Ida, uh, seeing her patients, and she had a lot of elderly and in primary care, all the same issues that we have here and in, in this country. And the photo opposite, uh, Dr. Ida and Dr. Ashrene, they came to uh, NYU on the Erasmus Exchange. And they spent uh, three days in the clinic with me. They're both primary care physicians. Uh, I, I would think they were nurses. They act like nurses. <laughs> but um, they spent time with me and with students, my students in the, uh, in the clinic. And we had discussions with uh, uh, Dr. Allison about e evaluation, how, um, what, what metrics do you want to uh, evaluate when you're looking at practice. Uh, in the lower left uh, was my most recent visit uh, in October to LSMU. It was at one of the hospitals, and those are nursing uh, administrators. We presented about um, the workforce, diversifying the workforce with advanced nursing practice. And the lower right, uh, Aurelia and Lena and Girate were here and we visited with some of the administrators at NYU Langone, uh, the administrator for the um, director of the advanced practice uh, providers and one of the um, NP managers. And the top picture here are um, nurses from the international nursing meeting that um, I presented in Lithuania. And the lower photo, there are two of the two of the women are from uh, the United Kingdom. And so in my visits there to Lithuania, I have been able to meet some of their other uh, cooperating partners. My most recent visit, I met partners from um, it was um, which which city was it really? Uh, country. Cardiff. Cardiff. It, it just was Cardiff. Cardiff. Okay. But Cardiff. my most my, my most recent visit, there were also colleagues from um, was it um, Kazakhstan or Az Uzbekistan? Uh, from Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. Yes. Yes. And so I and so these the, these um, cooperations do permit you to also meet others. And then Aurelia was here when. We had the Ghana Nurse Leaders um, event, and so she was able to um, to to meet them. And the picture, some sightseeing in the I guess it was the original capital in Lithuania, and uh, uh, Aurelia was here in 2019 in Thanksgiving, and so she was at my home with my big extended uh, Jamaican family. So she tried out new foods. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and it is from my enrichment program for, from Baltimore. It is, was an uh, incredible experience. We were we volunteering in a food factory and sharing food for vulnerable people. It's really a very nice experience. And Thanksgiving day also, it is, uh, 
incredible was for me to hear and to test Jamaican food. <laughs> And so coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. And I feel that uh, our collegial professional relationship has grown into a very special friendship that will be lifelong, I'm sure. And so that is our presentation. Thank you. And we'll take any questions. Thank you, Jamie and Aria, uh, um, for your excellent and informative presentation. Global collaboration is about people-to-people's -people connection. So the exchanges between NYU and the SMAU actually provides an excellent example for that. Fulbright and um, Eras Erasmus programs are two great programs that support these global exchanges and also as uh, Jamie showed that the technology certainly has facilitated these exchanges and make the exchanges much easier. I'm particularly actually fascinated about this uh, kind of having, uh, having video class that linking uh, undergraduate students together. This is a very innovative kind of approach that can think about to, uh, can help our students as well as uh, uh, students from Lithuania that learn from each other uh, via virtual space. Uh, these kind of um, innovative programs that <coughs> I would like to see more that to kind of explore uh, more in, in the future. So yes, we have, uh, we have already, I, I already see some uh, uh, questions uh, in, in the audience. Uh, let me see what kind of uh, question. So, uh, yes, so one question saying that, say, I'm curious about is for uh, Dr. Nuren. Uh, I'm curious about whether you had an uh, interpreter with you in Lithuania. If not, how was the language uh, difference uh, handled? Uh, in the clinical setting while you were in Lithuania. So yes, uh, Jamie, uh, could you provide some? Yes, uh, yes. Well, well, I, I was very fortunate that I, I never had to navigate, except when I was shopping uh, in Lithuania without having a colleague, someone who, you know, was fluent in English. And uh, in the classroom, uh, the students un understood English, um, well enough to know what I was uh, saying. And they were hesitant, sometimes they were hesitant in asking questions because, but then uh, Aurelia would translate. Um, even with presentations, she would say, okay, do a few slides, stop, and I'll translate. And uh, back and forth like that. And in the clinic, when I was in the clinical setting, uh, the same thing. I, I didn't um, ask, uh, of course, all the patients um, spoke Lithuanian. And I, I did not expect the um, provider to interrupt and tell me what's going on during, during the visit. At the end of the visit, however, they would brief me on, uh, on, on what actually happened. But it, it's, it's funny, I, I sort of knew what was happening because as I said, things are very much the same. And just based on the patient's um, expression or the way they asked a question, uh, I, I, I kind of knew what, what was going on, but it was, um, the language did not be a problem because uh, so many in Lithuania do speak English. Thank you. This is a great certainly language, um, right? So for 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 people who speak English and for English speaking countries, that that exchange makes uh, things much uh, easier. Um, so the uh, next question is for um, Aria. That how uh, how did how did your team select which faculty would visit uh, NYU? 
through, the, through this erasmus erasm program and the, when they would visit. Uh, thank you for your question. Actually, our friendship started 10 years ago, as mentioned, Jimmy Seta, and you know, you're always looking which university is the best and who are uh, very uh, knowledgeable uh, in one or another field. And when we decided and when we started to uh, think about advanced nursing practice, of course, we immediately found that Jamisetta Newland and all team, it is the creators and it is the, like, I always tell them, Jamisetta Newland is mother of advanced nursing practice in the United States. And it has happened. It just was dream and dream stay our reality. And, and I, I know um, from past experiences too, exchanges, typically if, um, like if they're interested in curriculum, you know, they will select a faculty who is sort of responsible for their curriculum. Or if it's the practice side, you know, perhaps like when the physicians came, that's the practice side. And so it, it uh, looks, and then we did discuss at different times, when was the best time to visit uh, NYU? Because we wanted them to come when students were there, you know, and, or other things were happening. And, and so, we, we did mutually decide um, what time, when they would come. Uh, and then uh, LSMU decided who would come for what reason. Because also some physicians came to, to look at the simulation lab at NYU. Uh, they came for a visit also. Great, thank you. Uh, uh, the next question is for Jamie, that looking at other experiences, certainly you have a lot of um, kind of global uh, experiences. So looking at other experiences you may have uh, in other countries, what set apart your experience with SMMU in developing the nurse practitioner role in Lithuania? Well, my experiences have been um, with Japan since 2005. I'm still affiliated with them and, and Botswana. And, and then just we had started some initial discussions in China, but then the pandemic hit. And um, what I found very unique uh, in Lithuania is how prepared they were. One thing, their commitment to making this happen. And when we developed our timeline, I had to keep up with them. They were always ahead of the timeline. And, and documents, many documents in Lithuania are prepared with uh, like English on one side and Lithuanian on one side or, you know, are separate, but a lot of things are prepared like that. But some things uh, really did have to translate for me. But, um, and I also, they, they were very smart in looking at um, the uh, law, you know, the legislation, regulations before starting um, a program. Oftentimes people, you know, faculty will start a program without really looking at how is how are these graduates going to be able to practice. And so they actually having all of that in place the, the the title and everything in place before students started gave students some assurance that they would be able to practice when they graduated. But I was I've always been very impressed by their um, responsiveness and 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 really their absolute commitment that this is going to work, that Lithuania is going to have advanced nurses. And now, of course, they're they're since they've had uh, graduates, getting them uh, into the practice roles, into the full scope of practice that um, they have been educated and and trained. But they but they were so prepared, so prepared. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Certainly. Um... SMIU's uh, commitment to global exchange is, is very impressive. So 
Uh, next next question is that for for both of you uh, that you uh, uh, discussed a lot about uh, the practice and the program uh, development and the research uh, collaboration between the two schools. Do you believe there's more potential for collaboration on student exchange and the student abroad uh, opportunities and the study abroad opportunities? Do you want to start, Aurelia? No, please, I have to take one. <laughs> well, uh, study abroad, you know, with, with nursing uh, programs, majors, there's so many uh, mandatory the, the content, um, the time, you know, the, the curriculum is set. And so it's, it's not as much flexibility as we would like, especially for undergraduate masters. Um, and, and students who want to study abroad may have to make the decision to, um, you know, be behind uh, from and, and, and not finish when they had originally planned to. But we have discussed um, exchanges, you know, started with the virtual, but, but for the um, advanced nursing practice, you know, exchanges that would be um, in person could be very valuable. And of course, countries, you know, there are different rules within different countries about who can come in and, and go into a uh, facility and actually uh, interact with, with um, patients. I know here, here and at, um, at NYU, you know, whenever the faculty came, they, they, um, they would have to all of these requirements for immunizations, et cetera, et cetera. And it would be the same for, for students. And so those are the kind of hurdles for actual um, in-person patient care contact that, that a student that a student might have. Yes. For for research is different, you know. And I would like to add, because we have a long experience with your countries, and we are encouraging our students to go abroad for some semester and look at how healthcare system working abroad, and they coming back not only with professional knowledge, but they also obtaining social cultural skills, and they expanding attitudes. With the United States, uh, we have some experience exchange with uh, PhD students, but I think maybe in the future we found some appropriate way, model, and we can to make these exchanges. Because I supporting this idea and encourage our future nurses to go abroad and investigate another system. Excellent. That uh, think about that. Uh, certainly, there's a lot that we can learn from uh, countries like uh, Lithuania. Think about how your commitment to global exchange and your kind of a prom promotion for students exchange and the faculty exchange. That think about uh, study abroad. That is strongly encouraged. Uh, that we uh, these kind of experiences are so valuable to think about we can learn from each other, that these kind of, um, the, the, to prepare our students and the faculty to be globally competitive. And also more important to have global perspective into our education, into our practice and the research. So that's, um, uh, this is really a wonderful kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, initiatives that you are taking on. Thank you. Um, and uh, uh, an, uh, another question that for both of you to think about that you also discussed uh, uh, successful uh, international partnership and what and what some of the kind of contributing factors can be, but how important were the scholarship and the funding opportunities that that you later received to further this kind of partnership. Yeah, you know, uh, without scholarship, we can't meet each other, discuss, and to explore country, people, and system. 
it is really very important scholarship. After that, when you each, each you know each other, you are building a relationship already on existing uh, relationship. And maybe later it is not so important, but I think it's always important to receive some international scholarship because it is support you in every way. No, and I, um, I agree. Um, everything needs funding. And, and the Fulbright um, actually has um, a lot of supports. You know, you, you get medical insurance, uh, you know, uh, a stipend, and there are certain responsibilities that are very clearly uh, listed for, for the host uh, institution and for the um, institution uh, and, and, and from where, where the uh, scholar is coming from. But, but with the... In the the scholar, you you become part of a uh, an alumni network, and and you can always uh, stay connected, and they they always will send you where new opportunities are. Uh, they actually contacted me uh, to to see if I I would go to um, I think it it was uh, one of the South American countries I can remember exactly to teach. Uh, to, to lay people epidemiology and uh, basic research to lay people because they were having you know a lot of infectious diseases and things and 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 I said yes I I can do that however uh, you must be proficient in Spanish and I said nowhere on my application did I ever say I was proficient in Spanish <laughs> so but I mean the opportunities and. And also, after having received a Fulbright, you are sort of, um, uh, some may look at you differently, like, you know, of course, that they may say you're smart, but but that's not why you do it. You do it for the mutual benefit between uh, two countries. And as Aurelia said, you know, it really, and as, as you said, uh, Bay, it uh, expands your global perspective. You know, you really look at things differently, and and as fac faculty, you know, that's one thing that you can try to uh, impart to your students. You know, I always encourage students: you've got to expand your worldview. <laughs> you know, you have to mm -hmm. think beyond. Right. You have to think beyond what you know, and what you're comfortable with. And and of course, it always helps to have money to be able to do that. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, our time is almost up. We have a last question. Uh, this question is for Jamie. Uh, in your experience, what is the reported and the perceived added value over time of international students in uh, pers uh, in person visits besides uh, personal enrichment once the kind of advanced practice role is established in the home in the home country. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll just start by saying one thing that I noticed when I attended my first ICN meeting in, in 2005 in Taiwan was that nursing is so universal and the, 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 the issues, the problems we have are, are the same. And all nurses simply want to provide the highest quality of care to their patients. That's all we want. And, and being able to, to do that, of course, the more different types of experiences you have, interactions with, uh, with, uh, with, with others um, than yourself, uh, working within different health systems, uh, educational systems, you know, the more you can diversify your experiences, the more, um, the better able you'll be able to uh, provide really um, high quality care. And, and I think e even if the a, an exchange, uh, a person to person exchange is simply observation, you can learn a lot. Like I did when I sat in with the primary care physician in Lithuania uh, in her day, you know, and nurses are taught to be observant. And so really, um, Looking, listening, hearing, 
all of those things using all your senses and every single opportunity you have uh, will benefit the, the, you know, global health. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, our time is up. I would like to thank uh, the, all the audience to uh, listen to this session. And also I would uh, encourage, uh, encourage you to think about applying for Fulbright these kind of programs. So um, thank you very much. And uh, uh, thank you, Jamie and uh, um, Aria, uh, Aria for, for your excellent uh, presentation. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.